Hey guys, I haven't talked about animals in a long time. You know animism is a relationship with the natural world and animals are a big part of that. Hares have an association with Halloween, so I thought I'd share some stories about that with you to help you to tune into both. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Laura Giles with Pan Society. Thanks for being here. If you like this video, please show us some love by liking it and sharing it. And if you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. Okay, let's start by talking about the differences between rabbits and hares. They're not the same thing. In fact, they're completely different species, which means that they can't mate with each other. You can tell a rabbit from a hare by looking at its ears. Hares have really long ears that have black markings. They also have longer hind legs. They're also bigger. Rabbits stay the same color. Hares change from brown or gray to white in the winter. If you've ever seen a newborn bunny, they have no fur and have to be kept warm because they can't regulate their own temperature and they're helpless. But baby's hares can be hopping around an hour after birth. It's crazy, right? But looks are not the only difference. There are lots of behavioral differences. For example, hares don't burrow. They live above the ground and this makes them easier prey and they have adapted by being really fast. They can run 37 body lengths per second. That's astounding. Cheetahs, which are thought to be the fastest animal, can only run 23 body lengths per second. Bunnies are social. They live in colonies. Hares tend to be solitary and come together only to mate and their mating rituals are really interesting. The female makes the male chase her for several miles. He has to catch her to mate with her. If he's too slow, well, he won't be able to spread his genes, so it's adaptive. But that's not the only test. If she's not ready, she might punch him. <laughs> it's true. Female rabbits just sit there and take it. And hares are skittish. In captivity and don't make great pets. We've also seen very docile rabbits and they're um, good pets, they just kind of sit there. Bunnies in the wild hide during the day for the most part, which you can see them sometimes during the day, but they usually stay in their burrows during the day. And hares are outside all the time. You know that kid's story, Jack and Jill? Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water, that one? Those are hares, actually. The male is called a jack, as in the jack rabbit, and the female is called a jill. And you might think that you know nothing about hares, but there's a really famous one that Westerners know, and it's Bugs Bunny. Yeah, he's a hare. He's not a bunny. So if you want to get an idea of what the spiritual energy of a hare is, check out Bugs Bunny. Now, it's not the same interpretation from culture to culture, but it's a pretty common one. So just like the Asian, African, and North American hare, Bugs is a trickster. He defies authority. He's willful. He breaks the rules. But he does it in a way where you can't hate him for it. He can make others look ridiculous or even make himself look ridiculous. He's a shapeshifter, goes from crying one moment to singing the next, and you can't really pin anything down on him or really get to know him. The outcome of his antics could be positive or negative. You just never know. And that's the energy of the trickster. Bear Rabbit is another American trickster hare. He originated in Africa. Um, was brought here to the New World on slave ships. And then um, their stories might have mixed with the Cherokee stories and kind of created a morph character. And then there's another American trickster here. It's um, Compere Lapin from the Cajun culture. And these stories are a lot like Bugs Bunny. In fact, Bugs was probably inspired by these stories. In one African story, the hare is the divine messenger of the moon. And the moon waxes full and then disappears to nothing and comes back again. And she wanted to send hair to earth to share that gift with the humans. And Tricky Hair got it wrong. Instead of um, bringing immortality, he brought death to the world. And the moon was furious and beat the hair with a stick, splitting his nose. And that's another difference between the rabbit and the hare, actually. And as part of that punishment, hair has to lead the dead to the underworld after death. So there's a lot of cultures that associate hairs with the moon. In China, the hare in the moon is depicted with a mortar and pestle where he mixes the elixir of immortality. 
He's the messenger of the female moon deity and the guardian of all the wild animals. So it's a really similar story to the African story. In Chinese folklore, female hares can see through um, the touch of the full moon's light, so they don't even need jacks. And they can also get pregnant by licking moonlight from a male hare's fur. In China, hares are symbols of longevity, fertility, and feminine energy. In Egyptian mythology, hares were closely associated with the cycles of the moon. Like the moon, hares are masculine energy when waxing and feminine when waning. And the moon is always feminine, but as all things are both masculine and feminine. And when the moon is growing, that's her masculine face. With the hare, it might be more of a thing of being an androgynous type creature. And that's a common theme with the hair, or at least the shape-shifting part. Probably the most famous association with the hair with the moon comes from the Celtic culture. So this is where we get Easter bunnies. So Easter was the moon goddess, and her stories are about death, redemption, and resurrection from winter to spring. So it's the wheel of life. And Easter took the shape of a hair at the full moon. In the spring, she laid brightly colored eggs, you know, Easter eggs, and eggs are the symbols of fertility that were given to children during the spring fertility festivals, and obviously that's where the Easter bunny comes from. So hares acted as Easter's messenger, and all hares were sacred to her. So eating hares was forbidden in Celtic cultures because it was said like it's eating your grandmother. And this is because many goddesses and wise women were said to shapeshift into hairs, or it could have been because their association with fertility and that's essential to survival, so you don't want to cut that off. And the ancient Celts studied rabbit and hare tracks for divination and spiritual purposes. They also looked at their mating dances and used their entrails to see into the future. And they thought that since rabbits lived in the ground, they were better able to speak to the other world. See, the messenger of the dead theme again. Isn't it crazy how such diverse cultures could get the same things despite their differences? So symbols are pretty universal. It pays to pay attention to the natural world and you'll make the same connections. There's lots of stories about hares, but I just want to cover one more symbol and that's fertility. In the Greco-Roman period, Pliny the Elder said that eating hare meat cured sterility. <laughs> eating it increased your libido for nine days. And in Greece, Men gave rabbits to women as tokens of love. In Rome, they were given to women to help them conceive. And hares have two to six babies with uh, three to four litters a year. So the term breeding right, like rabbits is true. They definitely have a lot of babies and you can see why they're associated with fertility. Hares are usually associated with women. Um, femininity, feminine deities and uh, women's wisdom or magic the lunar cycle, fertility, longevity, rebirth, things like that. And they have another side too. Like women, they're contradictory, paradoxical creatures, being both clever and foolish, cowardly and courageous. They have a reputation for wild sexuality and also virginal purity. Hares were a huge part of the non-Abrahamic religious world. And these religions were often hostile to the goddess. So the Abrahamic religions were often hostile to the goddess and femininity as they gained in popularity. And hares were seen as uh, witches in human form, or at least associated with witches and wise women. And were taught, people were taught to separate the natural world. Um, and so a lot of the symbolism was lost. And the hair was such a universal symbol that there were so many stories all around the world, and still are, in practically every culture. So it's fairly easy to recover that those stories. Um, and the symbols are present everywhere, pretty much. You can use your intuition to figure out um, what it means for you. And if the hair is your spirit animal, you might be tempted to go out and get one for a pet. Remember what I said about hairs not making the greatest pets? Wild hares have only a 10% chance of surviving in captivity. Think, you know, the trickster. Do you want a um, trickster living in servitude? They're probably not going to have that. They're wild. They need to be free. And if you want a hair-like creature, consider the Belgian hare, which is actually not a hare at all. But like hares, they don't make the best pets if you want something to cuddle because they spook easily and don't like captivity. But they're the best option. Um, so you might want a bunny instead. And if hair is your spirit animal, you might be tricky, mercurial, um, or you may want to uh, cultivate those traits within yourself. And your spirit animal may teach you things by the school of hard knocks. 
As with all spirit animals, it's different for different people. If you want to know, just cult a relationship with this, the spirit of it and find out. Thanks for tuning in. See you on the next pan video. Ciao.